Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and welcome to Designer's Best, where we take a look at a designer and tell you my favorite games from them. Today we're taking a look at Michael Kiesling. Now, Michael Kiesling's a very interesting designer to me because he was half of the pairing of Kramer and Kiesling. They did a lot of games together, and in fact, many of the games on my list are also co-designed from uh, Wolfgang Kramer. Now, you'll notice there's, there's going to be overlap, but the lists are not the same. And Kiesling these days has really shot up there to be a designer, especially this year, coming out with one of the most popular games of the year, for sure, uh, and anticipated. And I, I remember when I when he first was making games, most of his solo games I was not a big fan of. So when I heard that there was more Kiesling games coming, I thought, eh, eh we'll see. But his later games have really surprised me with how much I'm enjoying them. So without further ado, let's get started. Number 10 is a game that he just recently designed um, on his own. This is a Euro game, Heaven and Ale. Now, Heaven and Ale is not a thematic game for sure. You're simply just moving guys around a track, collecting things and moving your own little pieces down a track. In fact, for me, it reminds me a lot of uh, Russian railroads in some senses. But even though the theme is barely there, there's no Heaven and no Ale, but there definitely is some good, strong mechanisms to the game, something that he is well known for. Number 10, Heaven and Ale. Number nine is Maharaja. Uh, this is a game I enjoyed when I first played this game, uh, which he co-designed with Kramer. I enjoyed the fact that it was essentially not a game about getting victory points, but a race as you ran around from place to place trying to build uh, these uh, something in, in the different cities on the board, the first person to do that once. So it was kind of an efficiency type game, but it just worked really well and also had some nice artwork. Number eight for me is Takao. The Mask Trilogy with him and uh, Kramer. Takao was where you went out and you built temples in the jungle. It has some really... The, the recent um, uh, reprint of this game looks beautiful. The different temples. And it has this real sense of exploration. Also, Takao was notable for the action selection system. And so where you had a certain amount of action points and you spent them on your turn. There are many games from these guys in this category. And Takao is one of them. Uh, one of the ones that does not make my list, but a lot of people also enjoy, is Torres. Number seven is another game in the same genre, Java. Java, when I first played it, I was amazed by how thick the tiles are today. I guess they might be considered to be normal, but it still was a pretty neat idea as you were slowly putting out tiles. This game took the action point thing to extremes because there were so many different things you could do, so many options. I mean, it felt sometimes like you just had thousands of options on where to put tiles as you scored a point. It's fairly abstracted out but a fun game. Number six is Azul. Now, Azul is one of the best-selling games of 2017 slash 2018. It is that popular. It is a game is essentially where you are grabbing a pile of tiles, uh, grabbing tiles, and then the rest gets scattered, and you have to take all of them. Sometimes you get more tiles than you want. It's beautiful, and it is just popular. When I just was at a convention, and people were playing Azul all over the place. Uh, a lot of fun. And just, again, a very simple, good idea. Number five is Vikings. Now, Vikings is one of his older games. It is not a game that's really about Vikings. Or I guess it is, but I don't really feel the theme from the game at all, where you are basically building up with tiles and grabbing these little Vikings off of a wheel and putting them out there and scoring points. But there's a lot of good options in the game, and it feels very fulfilling as you're watching the board grow and just grabbing the things off that wheel. Vikings. Number four is Riverboat. Riverboat came out last year and hasn't really got a lot of buzz, but I really enjoyed this game as you have these four rounds of the game. Everyone's participating in each of these, or five rounds, five phases of each round. Everyone's participating, but whoever took the tile is going to get a special bonus to that round. And it's all about getting riverboats, which are worth points and moving things on tracks. And yeah, I mean, the riverboat thing is almost kind of like an afterthought. But the game has a lot of cool options, especially because it forces you to decide when you're going to score. And do you want to score early or wait till you can score later on? But you can only score so many times. And I thought that was a clever, good idea. Number three is the final one in the Mass Trilogy, and that is Mexica. Mexica is an area control game, but you pick the areas. You are building canals like, I want to get the most points for this, so I'm going to make a small area and control it. Or I want to make the area bigger, but that gives people other room to move in their things. Again, the reprint that uh, Yellow uh, did was just exceptional. Beautiful buildings. Really like this one. Mexica. 
Number two, still co-designing with Wolfgang Kramer. In fact, uh, number two and number one are both that way. Number two is Pueblo. Pueblo is a abstract game, three-dimensional one, where you have these pieces that you're placing on the board, but trying to place your color pieces in such a way that this guy walking around the outside cannot see them. So you're trying to place neutral ones to block it or hide them behind other players' colors. Sometimes the, the chief looks from above, so you don't want to have too many on the top. Really well done game. Uh, it's one of the most pure games I know. Really enjoy it. Pueblo. And number one for me is Adventureland. This game from Haba. I just love this grid. As you each turn, you're turning over two cards and placing things in this grid and then moving your people, but they can only move to the left or move down. And when you land on different things, you're getting like swords and herbs and, you know, ways to get ready and gold to go fight these, these uh, wraith monsters. But also, the game, when you get it, there's essentially three games in the box. And if you get the expansion, three more games, all very different. And you use these same mechanisms, but the scoring is different and they play out very differently. Love this game. Really enjoy it. That's Adventureland. So, those are my favorite games from Michael Kiesling. Obviously, he and Kramer are a powerhouse duo for sure. But at the same time, each of them on their own has made some fantastic games. And with Azul and Heaven and Ale and other games, uh, future games I'm sure coming out, uh, Michael Kiesling is still a name that's popular. And he's also had a very long career in this regard. Tell me what your favorite games of his are in the comments. I'm sure many of you love Torres and other of his games. Until next time, though, I'm Tom Bass, and you've been watching Designer's Best, Michael Kiesling. <laughs>